Ma Kapuja, 15th February, 1976. Today is Ma Kapuja Day. It is the day when the Lord Buddha declared his intention to let go of life, taking leave of the world of samsara and the prison of the cycle of birth and death, the Vartachakka. He chose to abandon his body and discard the very heavy burden he had carried for eighty years. He had borne this extremely oppressive load during all that time, and it was never anything but a burden. Such is the nature of the human body, Tadukantha. By contrast, other things are sometimes heavy and sometimes light, allowing us to occasionally catch a breath. For example, food and water are heavy when we have to carry them, but as we steadily use them, they become lighter and lighter. But we have been bearing the load of our body since birth, and it never gets lighter. It's always heavy. As we advance in years and our strength declines, it seems increasingly heavy. That is why the Buddha declared, Parahave Panzakanda. These five groups are an extremely heavy load. Apart from shouldering the heavy load of this body, we also have painful feeling, memory, thought, and consciousness to put up with, all burdensome and piercing to the heart. Not only are they oppressive, but they are also sharp-pointed, so they pierce through the body and the heart. The Lord Buddha put up with this body until he was eighty years old. To put it simply, he must have said, Oh, this body is beyond bearing. It is time to leave it. Thus he declared that in three months' time he would abandon life and lay down that burden. He made the decision on the full moon day of the third lunar month. On that very same day, twelve hundred and fifty noble disciples, Saryasavakas, assembled together spontaneously without invitation, each coming on his own initiative. The Lord Buddha then expounded the teaching to the Arahant disciples, delighting them with the bliss of the Buddha Tamma. This gathering thus became the pure assembly, Visuddhi Upozata. Here is a brief outline of what was said on that day. Sabbaza Karanangusalu Supasampada Sojita Baryodabanang Hetang Bhutana Sasanang Anupavado Anupakado Bharti Mukecha Sangvaro Madanyuta Chapatasaming Banjancha Sayanasanang Atichitte Cha Ayogo Etang Bhutana Sasanang The Buddha gave this teaching to the twelve hundred and fifty arahants as a form of diversion on that afternoon. For those arahants, it was more of an enjoyment than an exhortation, because all of them were already pure ones, no longer needing instruction to cleanse the Kilesas and Asavas from their hearts. That is why they were called the Pure Assembly. In the history of Buddhism, this was the sole occasion that the Lord Buddha expounded his teaching to a gathering of 1250 arahant disciples. During the Lord Buddha's lifetime up until his final passing away, Barnibbana, it never occurred again. We commemorate the Buddhas and Arahants because of their rare brilliance. They were figures of wonder among all people throughout the world, for worldly people's hearts are corrupted by the stain of Gilesas, so none of them could be considered pure like the Arahants. Sabbapapasa Akaranang To refrain from unwholesome actions which give rise to all kinds of dukkha. The evil nature of the heart is critically important. We can act unwholesomely all the time, the bad actions of body and speech have their limitations, but the evil of the jitta, which depresses and dulls itself, is prompted by our own thinking and imagining. The agents that push and compel the jitta into sadness and depression are those things in the jitta which are already murky and defiled. The Lord Buddha called them gilesas. They are those factors which maneuver sanya and sankara into functioning. They cause the jitta to become gloomy and disconsolate. Evil acts of wrongdoing are not merely actions like robbery, looting, and plundering. That is evil on a gross level. But our tendency is to continually generate the intermediate and more subtle evils in our hearts all the time, and this automatically brings feelings of depression. The heart that is downcast will be downcast wherever we go because we constantly create that condition in our hearts. 
Walking, standing, sitting, or reclining, our hearts always imagine and contrive. Thus we become miserable in every posture. The Lord Buddha urged us not to produce gloom and misery for ourselves. This is one aspect of his teaching. What method will prevent the heart from being gloomy and depressed? Kusalusu Pasampada we must develop enough wisdom to be capable of correcting this depression. By cleaning out the gloom makers and the evils, we will then have Zachitta Bariyodapanang, a bright and cheerful heart. When our cleverness, which is our Satipanya, has cleaned out all the filth and gloom from the heart, it becomes Zachitta Bariyodapanang, bright and clear. Evils, great and small, then gradually fade away as the Chitta becomes purified. The teaching of all the Buddhas is like this. They all say, do it this way, there is no alternative. Any easier way would be known by the wisest of all, the Lord Buddha. He would have woven us all a hammock to lounge around in as we progressively eliminate the kilesas. This would accord with his reputation as a teacher full of love and compassion, ministering to a world full of frail and grumbling beings. In fact, the Lord Buddha had already used his superior skill and ability to establish the shortest and most direct path. Each of the Buddhas had to cultivate the perfections, Barami, before realizing Buddhahood. They used the Tamma in their hearts to drive out the Gilesas and then taught this as the true and correct way. They tested and selected with the maximum power of their minds before discovering and teaching Tamma suitable for all living beings. Suitable here does not mean suitable to people's liking. It refers to a practice suited to overcoming the kilesas. Tamma that is right and suitable has just this one purpose. No other tammas can surpass the middle way of practice passed on by the Lord Buddha. The kilesas are not frightened by any other means or methods. Nothing else can eject them from the heart or even scratch their skins. Anubhavado don't slander other people. Anubakato. Don't harm or kill human beings or animals. Bardimokke chasangwaro. Keep your behavior within the bounds of tamma, which is the means of uprooting the gilesas. Matanyata chapattasaming. Know the right measure in using food and living frugally. Don't indulge and exceed what is reasonable for a practitioner. Know the right amount in whatever you're involved with. Bandancha sayanasanang. Look for seclusion, and use this solitude to deal with the kilesas. Develop the jitta to excel in tamma, employing satipanya step by step. This is the essence of the teaching of all the buddhas. This was the tamma with which the Lord Buddha delighted all the savakas. To those savakas who were not yet arahans, he also taught sabbabhapasa akaranang. This is a practice necessary for us to follow, the only way we can gradually destroy the gilesas in our hearts. But do we genuinely feel this to be true, or is it merely that hammock that takes our fancy? The essence of the pure tamma imparted by each buddha is directly drawn from each of their hearts. But have we received it into ours? The Lord Buddha shared it with his utmost love, metta. Do we receive it with full devotion and trust, with total mind and heart? If we merely feign acceptance of the tamma and later discard it, then it will have no value for us at all, and that would go against the Buddha's original intention. The Lord Buddha decided to relinquish his body on the full moon day of the sixth lunar month. He had announced this on the third month's full moon, which is today. From that moment on, the elements, tato and kantas, with all their oppressive and irritating effects, vanished from the Lord. This is anubadise samnibbana, complete passing away without remainder. No more worries, no more responsibilities to any samudhi, mundane convention. Nothing remained. This is the tamma that transcends the world, the ultimate tamma. The world comprises various forms of samudhi, evident everywhere. The three realms of existence are the worlds of samudhi, the worlds of assumption and change, 
the worlds of anicca, dukkha, and anatta, the governing principles of all existence. No one can resist them. But once we have transcended them, all concerns come to an end. Nitta do parinibbuto, craving totally ends. No mundane conventions remain. It is from this tamma that all the truths taught by the Buddha emanate. If we take this tamma deeply to heart in our practice, then it will ring and roar in our hearts. At first it will resound in a cool, calm, and peaceful condition of heart, namely the various levels of samadhi. Then it will resonate with banya in our reflection and analysis, so that we can gradually free ourselves, step by step. Finally, it will resound in the pure visuddhi state, wherein we are completely released. There, nittado parinibbuto, all craving is entirely extinguished. The source of these cravings is all of the various kinds of gilesas, which are never sated, never satisfied. Such is the nature of the gilesas. All the waters of the ocean cannot match this craving. Natitanha samanadi. The waters of river and ocean cannot equal the gilesas, the cause of craving. They continually engulf the hearts of sentient beings and never run out. How can we dry up these waters? We must bail them out, using the energy of our practice, until they eventually diminish. We must drain these waters every day, scrutinizing, understanding, and relinquishing them every day. Then the waters will not appear to be so great. They are really only as large as our kantas, Rupa, Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, Vinyana. That's all. But for the heart that is attached to them, they are a heavy matter. The heart doesn't grasp after a piece of land. Instead, it seizes hold right there. This is the big issue, a hot and heavy concern. The gelesas are the very things that fuel the fires of the heart. No other fires can burn as hot as the fires of gelesa tanha asava. They inhabit the heart where they endlessly turn up the heat. We all know about floods, and when our lungs are flooded, the doctor can drain them. But when Gelesa Tanha Asava engulf the heart, what are we going to use to pump them out? There are only faith, effort, mindfulness, and wisdom to use. So, we must probe, examine, and investigate, in order to see things clearly as they really are. What does the heart cling to? What are its false assumptions? Does it ever heed the voice of Tamma? The Gilesas usually tend to play smart with the Buddha. They are his adversaries. They must always assert their cleverness with the Tamma and contend with it. Grasping is the Gilesas' way, while correcting and uprooting the Gilesas is Tamma's way. Tamma extracts the Gilesas with wisdom, transcending them to arrive at the supreme happiness of the Nibbana Tamma, or the pure Tamma. So there is always this rivalry between the Gelesas and Tamma. Keep on trying. Don't lose out to those things. This time you have now entered the boxing ring and must resolve to be the champion. Fight without backing down. Better to die than to let them carry you out of the ring. Even though you may be floored, if you are alive and still able to return the fight, then battle on. If you cannot manage to fight any more, then you can still curse them right there in the ring. What harm can that do? We are fighters, so if we can no longer fight the Gilesas, then at least we can curse every mother and father of them. This is your single remaining weapon. When you are down and cannot punch back, you still have a mouth. You can still denounce, scold, and curse, even though you are knocked down. <laughs> this is only an analogy, of course. To be a warrior doesn't mean we go around cursing and abusing anyone, but rather that we combat the Gilesas. We must fight in a manner befitting a disciple of the Tathagata, who was himself of the warrior class. Have you noticed how our teachers practiced? The Atsariyas whom we respect so deeply were all warriors in this way. If that's how they triumphed, why should they teach us to go in a different direction? All right, keep switching and varying your probe with Banya and stay on top of events within your mind. This banya possesses such a sharp discernment that it is capable of drawing us out of the deep mud hole where we've been stuck, buried in the tatus and kantas for countless aeons. 
Ultimately, we end up with the chitta, where again we must pull everything out. The I must be extracted from form, rupa, from the body, gaya, and from the elements, earth, water, fire, and wind. We must pull the chitta out of dukkha vedana, the painful feeling which we have assumed to be the self. The way to withdraw from rupa is simply to let go of that very form that we grasp as self. We pull away from vedana, sanya, sankara, vinyarna, which we think of as I and mine. Use wisdom right there to try and root out the self-identity. Keep up with whatever is going on. The chitta is subtle and extraordinary. The body, in contrast, is nothing special, no matter how much we cling to it in our delusion. Is it not our utter stupidity that makes us so readily shoulder this gross thing without ever wanting to put it down? If we were really smart and considered what's behind it all, instead of shouldering it, we'd let go of it. Why carry it? Probe and investigate this matter carefully. You do have mindfulness and wisdom, after all. We must not dread dying. Why be afraid? Fear is just another gilesa. Why build up gilesas by being frightened? We must build courage, because this is the quality that counters the gilesas. Bring it out to fight the gilesas in order to find out what actually dies. In fact, nothing dies. The gilesas are always lying to us about death. The moment we are unguarded, they immediately sneak in and whisper, When will I die? Today? Tomorrow? Here? Over there, I am going to die very soon. We upset ourselves with such thinking, while the tatu, elements, just remain there indifferent. In this way, we complicate matters and confuse ourselves by thinking that we are responsible. What kind of responsibility is that? It's more like self-confusion than self-responsibility. If we are truly self-responsible and self-reliant, then our hearts must have full satibanya for investigating and rooting out the gilesas. It must probe and extract all the anxieties and confusions about life, death, sickness, and the rest, never easing off or allowing the gilesas in to fool us. This is the practitioner who truly takes responsibility for himself. We must investigate everything, both close in and all around, until we know them and can extract them completely from the heart. Then we will have serene contentment. That happiness is found right here in the heart. Success and right responsibility are also right here. We may hear news that some person is Zodabanna, Sagadagami, Anagami, or Arahant. But what about us? Our news is only about weakness, discouragement, depression, stupidity, dejection, and chaos. This is our whole story. Doesn't it run contrary to the reports we hear about those others? Our personal news is exactly the opposite of those who possess the Aryan treasure, which is the Tamma wealth in their hearts. If our news is really like that, then it can only concern the thousand and one kinds of Dukkha. Sinking in the mud is more like it. Unwanted news makes up the account of our lives, and because we create this story, we must also bear the result. Who is Tamma intended for? Who is it taught for? Who makes up the Buddhist community, if not us? Surely the Tamma was taught and intended for us. What are we taught to overcome? Do we have the means to accomplish it? Yes, they are right here with us. It's as if the Buddha is right here before our very eyes, pointing them out to us. They are not in the distant past. They are fresh and up to date. The Tamma of the Lord Buddha exists here with us now, so what's the use of all our speculation? Oh, the Buddha realized Nibbana had a distant time and place. He taught the Tamma so long ago that by now it has become stale and insipid. Its true flavor cannot have lasted until today. There. Listen to that. The Gelesas lie to us, can't we hear them? Please beware this kind of Mara whose fabrications destroy the person who believes in such ideas, mashing him to pulp. The truth of Tamma belongs to no specific time or era. It is always with anyone who is searching for the truth. How can Tamma vanish with time? Why destroy the truth with these ideas and needlessly bring ourselves to ruin? Who in this world can know better than the Lord Buddha? 
The Buddha, Thamma and Sankha always stand challenging the Kilesas in the arena of truth. This condition is a garlic or timeless and therefore Zila, Samadhi and Banya are never outmoded or behind the times. They are independent of time and place and yet they are within everyone. They can be produced at any time and whenever cultivated they grow and develop. This is the way leading to Magga, Pala and Nibbana, which is beyond time and place. A garlic or just as the Gilesas too always exist in the hearts of beings in this world. People now, as in the Buddha's time, all have Gilesas. The overcoming of the Gilesas must also be done with the same Sila, Samadhi, Banya, faith and effort. How can the Gilesas be something of the distant past? They cannot. By rectifying them at the right spot, we could all go beyond Dukkha. We must uncover whatever is cloaking the heart. Mindfulness and wisdom must be focused on whatever is dark and obscure, taking that as the target for investigation. Where exactly are the sadness and gloom? They are conditions of the heart that we know. It's just like when darkness and light contact our eyes. We perceive darkness as dark, but the one who knows the darkness is not in the dark. Light and darkness are known. Sadness and cheerfulness are known. The one who knows knows in this way. We must make Banya penetrate further, taking the jitta or some mental object as our target. Don't be alarmed. Be neither glad nor regretful when sadness and gloom appear within the heart. Look on them as mental conditions that must be investigated, as things which arise, cease, and come out from the heart. They depend on the heart for their birth and then latch on to it. We must examine with persevering effort until we come to understand their true nature. Why get excited or concerned with them? Whatever passes through the heart, that we must know. Then we really are studying and practicing Buddhism. We have to study until we know, scrutinizing with banya until we understand those things that appear within ourselves. This true knowingness has no ups and downs. It is never like that. Mere conditions should be recognized as such by the practitioner. When those conditions end, all that remains is the state of complete purity, barisuddhi. From then on, there is no longer any concern for those conditions because they remained a problem only as long as we encountered them in the jitta. When they are there, they have to declare their existence for us to know. So, if we want the truth, we must take up the task of investigating Vedana, feeling, that appears simultaneously with any sadness, cheerfulness, depression, happiness, or suffering which come up. Such is the way of one who knows with all round banya, and we must use this wisdom to know all those things dwelling as conditions in the citta. This is the only place where we can finish off our studies. They talk of graduating with a bachelor's, master's, or doctor's degree, or passing the various levels of Bali study, following popular conventions of the time. The customs and rituals of people with Gilesas are numerous beyond description, unlike the ways of Thamma, which are always constant and unalterable. You can have as many grades and degrees as you like, but the Gilesas don't seem to bother with these things. They just enjoy themselves, singing away on top of people's hearts all the time. When were they ever more humble than people? They have greater power than people, stupid people, that is. Intelligent people are able to crush and destroy them, so this is the way we should gain our knowledge and qualification. The bachelor's degree in Sila, Samadhi, and Banya is all around us. That's the one we should get. Then it's on to the masters and the highest grade, so that we have Eka Zitta, Eka Thamma, one Zitta, one Thamma. But this isn't the oneness, Ega, of somebody with only one eye who is nearly blind already. Don't be an Eka of that kind. The true Eka of the Lord Buddha is Eka Zitta, Eka Thamma. Study up to this PhD. We must have all round knowledge for this highest Eka degree, replacing ignorance with knowledge about ourselves. We must bring in Banya to examine, probe, and clear up until reaching the supreme Eka Thamma level, or the genuine Thamma, which are the same. The Jitta and the Thamma are then one and the same. Bhuttang Thammang Sankhang Saranangatami. Taking refuge in the Buddha, Tamma, and Sankha falls within this one Tamma. Tamma Badibo, the light of Tamma, always shines brightly. This is the true Tamma, timeless and unconditioned. All right, let's build the Buddha, Tamma, and Sankha right here within our hearts, 
Buttang Tammang Sankang Saranang Tami. We go for refuge to the Buddha Tamma and Sankha. More precisely, we arrive at the Buddha Tamma and Sankha in the purity inside the heart, which is the coming together of all three refuges. Get to see them clearly within the heart. This is the way to create a refuge within ourselves. This is the complete Atahi Atanonato. We are our own refuge, not needing to depend on anything else. As is the Buddha, so are the Tamma and Sankha. Buddha, Tamma and Sankha are the same. When one has reached this stage, there is no need to go anywhere to pay our respects to the Lord Buddha. We can offer this purity of heart, this holy pure Tamma, as our puja to him. Nothing else can fit together as well as the heart and Tamma do. The Buddha of the Lord Buddha and our Buddha are one and the same Buddha. This is indisputable. Did the Lord Buddha pass away, Barinibbana, a long time ago or not? We no longer ask, because it's only a process involving the Tatu Kanta, physical elements. The Lord simply let go of his Kantas at a certain time, in a certain year and place. The noble disciples, Savaka Sanko, were just the same. Were they all completely annihilated after they passed away? Was it really like that? This is the view of empty, useless men and women, not the truth of the Tamma of supreme happiness which validates that state of purity. What is Sankha? It is the one who is now in possession of the state of purity. This is the real Sankha, which is found within all of us. Atahi atanonato, we are our own refuge. Make this refuge sufficiently secure. This is an essential point. It is imperative for the jetta to free itself from all dangers and attain freedom. Whatever is worth attaining is worth striving for. So go for it right here. Don't upset yourself over anything at all. Nothing in this world really matters. It's simply that our hearts go and get involved with things. We actually look for matters to disturb ourselves. So we must cut them off with sati and banya. Wherever we are, we are always alone. We are born alone. When we are sick, it isn't the assembled relatives that are in pain. When we die, we die alone. Nobody else can die in our place or deputize for our pain. We alone must suffer illness and die. Therefore, we must help ourselves, atahi atanonato, using our own mindfulness and wisdom. This is the most correct and appropriate way. The Lord Buddha decided to let go of his life on this same full moon day. Today we should also resolve to relinquish the Gilesas. These are the essential things that we must get rid of. As far as dying is concerned, the Lord Buddha said it wasn't important which day we die on. Whenever the breath runs out, that is the day we die. The only criteria is our last breath. If there's still breath, then we haven't yet died. So, we keep on breathing which is, itself, no real problem. It's merely a lot of wind. The important point is the laying of a firm spiritual basis and putting ourselves on the alert for the sake of our heart. Atahi atanonato. We are our own refuge. When this is fully realized, we experience contentment in living and dying, whenever or wherever it may happen. No more problems remain, for they were only a matter of samudhi mundane conventions.